Hello and welcome to my build video for the Stamina Templar. First things first, we're going to cover the uh, race. I'm playing as a Wood Elf. Um, let's see, we got 30k health, 21k max stam, uh, 17, almost 18k stam recovery, goes up to about 22 with a potion. Spell damage 4500. This is uh, what we're maxing out, and I will explain that later on in the video. Our resistances are 19k on the sword and board bar. Fully buffed, that goes up to about 2500. Go ahead and buff everything up. 2500. 56, uh, 78, 6200 on the back bar, and I go ahead and goes up to 6671 spell damage, and that's before any of our sets. For the Mundus, we are using the Serpent, a boost of this, uh, Stam recovery, as that is a little harsh on this particular build. Um, our food is Orzoga Smoke Bear Hunch, which we are using for recovery and adds max health. You could use Jewel of Misrule, it's almost as good. And we are typically Vampire Stage 3 for the Undeath passive. And also strike from the shadows uh, when we leave Mistform. Um, for the race, I chose Wood Elf for this character. Um, any stamina race would be pretty good. Um, I like the Wood Elf, it gives you extra movement speed through, through the Hunter's Eye passive. Which comes in handy if uh, you were to play this on a build that's not a Wood Elf. I would suggest swapping out uh, Infused on the Jewelry for Swift. At least one or two pieces. Alright, let's move on to the gear. We are running... Deadly on the body. Uh, deadly on the body and front bar. This is uh, increase your damage by 15% for channeled abilities, uh, which is our jabs, which is our main spammable, and it hits pretty hard. We've got a Clever Alchemist on the back bar for the boost to our spell damage and weapon damage. This is one of the uh, best damage sets in the game. Um, there are other sets you could run. I know not everybody likes Clever Alchemist. Um, Essence, Th Essence Thief is a good alternative. Um, Rallying Cry is also a good alternative. For the weapon damage, weapon and spell damage, and impen, you could use a uh, powerful assault for the weapon damage. And if you're looking to go a little tankier route, you could swap out uh, Pariah, Mark of the Pariah, for the increased tankiness, which is a good option. The biggest drawback of this build is it's a little squishy. The movement speed helps a lot, as well as uh, mist form. But in certain situations, it can be a little squishy. Um, we're using Balorg Head and Shoulders. When you use your ultimate ability, you get weapon and spell damage. This is great for our burst combo, as 
drop a Dawnbreaker or pop a Spell Wall and you get a ton of extra weapon and spell damage and penetration. And we got one piece of uh, trainee on the chest. Reinforced heavy. For the extra health. <clears throat> we are running six medium. One heavy. Um, three in pen. One reinforced. Three sturdy. For our jewelry, it's all infused weapon damage. We've got the Mark and Ring of Majesty as a mythic. Um, if you are to swap out um, for Pariah, I would probably get rid of this so I could run it front and back bar. So Pariah Jewelry, Pariah Front Bar, and Pariah Back Bar. And then use the Gaze of Sith is Mythic for the extra health and defense just to really uh, really go full bore on the tankiness. As you saw, we have plenty of weapon damage um, at 6, 000, nearly 6,700 or spell damage. So losing out on Balorg or Clever isn't the end of the world because you still have plenty of finishing power damage. Okay, let's move on to we're using Deadly Maul, Sharpened, Weapon Damage Glyph on our front bar. Back bar we've got Clever Alchemist, Sword and Shield. Defending, sturdy on the shield, got damage healing, uh, damage and health uh, poisons, you could run immobilize, that would be pretty nice. Also, the uh, escapist po potions, or poisons, uh, it would be nice just to have a way to lock people down, as there's not a lot of snares on this build. And it's they're all close range. I don't find myself attacking much on my back bar, but it's nice to have. All right, let's move on to the skills for the skills on the front bar. We are running. Fighting jabs, of course. This is our spammable. This is everything for this build. Um, it's our pretty much our only damage ability outside of our ultimate. And it hits hard. We've got Rallying Cry, Nice Heal. You get uh, Major Sorcery. Boosting our spell damage. We have Turn Evil. This is in the Fighter's Guild skill line. It gives you access to the passive that increases your damage. For having a Fighter's Guild ability slotted. Plus you have a nice fear. That's available on demand. And you can also get minor protection on your front bar. Next we have Razor Caltrops, this applies Major Breach, and a Snare, Camel Hunter, this is mostly there as a passive ability, you can use it to pull people out of stealth, but it's mostly there just to uh, provide the Major Savagery and to grant minor berserk potentially if you hit from the flank and it's also boost that uh, passive from the fighter's guild 
Our ultimate is Dawnbreaker of Smiting. This hits very hard, especially when it's fully buffed. And it's going to proc our Balorg set, increasing your weapon damage even further. Um, this build fully buffed with Glyph, Major and Minor Sorcery, and the whole nine yards gets up to like 8200 to 8400 uh, spell damage, which you just melt everyone. Especially with the penetration you get from Balorg, they just melt. Alright, on our back bar, we're using Living Dark. This ability gives access to Minor Sorcery, and this is also the reason why we are focusing into spell damage on our Jewelry Glyphs and our uh, Weapon Glyphs. Um, minor sort it uh, comes from the Illuminate passive. Casting a Dawn Ra Dawn's Wrath ability grants Minor Sorcery for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. Um, I don't think we have access to Minor Brutality, so this you have higher potential damage with uh, weapon spell or spell damage than you do with weapon damage. So spell spell damage is the stat to max out on Templar. We're using resolving vigor, big heal, fast heal. Um, if you're using uh, powerful assault, this is going to proc your powerful assault. Restoring Focus, this is our rune, you get Major Resolve, lots of spell resistance, uh, physical resistance, you get a heal, you get um, recovery, sustain, it's very nice. We've got Elusive Mist, this is your Snare Removal, Major Expedition, um, tons of mitigation. Um, with the mag pool on this build, you can use it for like 13 seconds from full magicka. It's plenty of time to get away or find a nice spot to get all your buffs up and uh, have a nice little fight. This has got me out of plenty of jams on this build since I've put it in there and it it's working really well. Um, I've ran a lewd. I prefer this. Especially for the extra mitigation that it provides. Um, we're tapping into a bunch of different uh, mitigation sources on this build to help improve some of the squishiness that I had mentioned earlier. Next we have uh, Extended Ritual. This is your cleanse, it's a heal, it's very nice. Um, yeah, it's a very good skill. Stacked with everything else, you have tons of healing, Living Dark, Vigor, Rune, Ritual, Rally on the front, tons of healing. It makes it much harder to uh, to get clapped. We got Temporal Guard on the back bar for the minor protection. I may run Spell Wall in that spot. It would be really good as a defensive ultimate as opposed to Dawnbreaker, so I could pop Spell Wall and then go into my uh, offensive attack and be a little tankier on the offense. 
Uh, but my sword on board isn't leveled up uh, to 50 yet. So in the meantime, we're running Temporal Guard, which is also a good choice. As far as mitigation, we've got 75% here on Elusive Mist. There is 5% here for Temporal Guard. In Vampire Skill Line, we've got Undeath doing up to 30% mitigation. We've got our Rune providing tankiness. And, uh,. Leave another 12% of mitigation in the CP, which I will go into shortly. Um, this makes the build quite survivable. The only additional thing I might include is Revealing Flare for the Major Protection. Um, to do that, I would probably slot mist on the front bar and put flare on the back bar that way you would just remove one of the fighter skilled abilities um, it's hard to choose um, either one kind of could be swapped out it really uh, situational but Mist on the front bar, and uh, Flare on the back bar. Um, probably Camel Hunter, just to, uh, that way you don't, you're replacing a detection with a detection. But yeah, uh, that way if you're in a dicey spot, you could run away with Mist on your front bar, and then be tanky on your back bar. Or extra tanky on your back bar. So together that's 5 with flare, 15, 30 from undeath, 45, another 12 from CP, and elusive mist. It's quite a lot of mitigation. Alright, speaking of CP, let's go ahead and take a look at that. In the green tree, we're running Steed's Blessing for movement speed. We've got Rationer to increase the duration of our food. Gifted Rider, increase our mount speed and liquid F efficiency. So that our potions and poisons... Uh, the stack lasts a little longer. We have a chance not to consume it. Since we're using poisons on Sword and Board and Clever Alchemist, this is very nice to have. It's very nice even if you're not using Clever Alchemist. But with Clever, it it works really well. Ironclad is uh, running Ironclad on our blue bar. Uh, it's a 6% damage mitigation for direct damage. It's right here in the Staving Death. We've got Duelist Rebuff. Another 6% damage reduction for single target abilities, which is a lot of abilities in PvP. We've got Biting Aura to buff our area of effect attacks, which is almost everything, and Master at Arms to buff our direct damage, which is pretty much every source of damage we've got. I would like to find a way to put a Cult Overload in, but it's not really... I don't think it would work very well. Alright, for the red CP, we are using Celerity for an increase in movement speed. Uh, Pain's Refuge. 
Uh, reduce damage taken by 2% for every negative effect you have on you. More mitigation. We got uh, relentlessness for a source of major protection. If you were to put um, flare on your bar, you could swap this out for something else. But for the time being, this is uh, this is the best without having flare on your bar and sustained. By suffering, increase your health, magicka, stamina, recovery by 30 per stage, 150 stam recovery, magicka recovery, and health recovery. Very nice. A little extra recovery when you have some negative effects. And that is it. That is our uh, Stamina Templar that we're running here for the High Isle patch. It has been very nice. I'm loving this build. This is one of my favorite characters to play right now. And I hope you all enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you like the build. And thanks for watching. Have a great day.